Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, uh, we're gonna ask a fairly common question uh, we get asked. Are there any spaces on the ship we aren't allowed to go into because they're still classified or there's still classified information in there? So, uh, the short answer to that question is no. We'll come back to that uh, in a minute. First, I wanted to talk about the space that we're in today because I don't think we've done this space before in its own video. This is the Combat Information Center, or CIC. It's pretty common on modern warships, uh, and it comes around in late 42, early 43. The United States has been installing radar sets on ships for a couple of years at this point, uh, and they've realized that, well, one, we need multiple radar sets per ship. We've got to have an air search set and a surface search set, and a height finder because they're two dimensional. The air search set tells you where the ship is on, or where the enemy aircraft is on this plane, but it doesn't tell you how high up it is. Uh, you might need a sonar. Uh, most ships have multiples of some of these different uh, radars. You might have a navigation radar in addition to a surface search radar. So the captain is commanding from the bridge and he's getting call-ins from all of these different radar units all over the ship, uh, trying to tell them where enemy ships are, where friendly ships are, what's going on in the battle space. And the U.S. Navy lost a couple of battles early on in the war that happened at night where they should have been able to rely on radar and couldn't. So pretty quickly it was determined that's not working. We're improving our radar technology so we no longer need the receivers to be right under the antennas high up in the superstructure all over the ship. We can run that down to the armored part of the ship. We're down here on fourth deck, uh, well below the armored part of the ship in a space that's uh, pretty well secured because uh, in the original designs, this was going to be a 16 inch powder magazine. And under construction, the Navy decided that they wanted to put a CIC on this ship. So they converted the magazine into this space. This space was one of the main uh, areas where the tactical action officer would uh, be able to coordinate the different information that the ship is gathering from its sensors and plot it on one board that he can then give the captain an accurate picture of the battlefield. In the 1980s, this space became a little bit redundant to the combat engagement center, which was added up in the superstructure, which we've showed in a number of videos. This space is deep inside the ship. It's off the tour route. It's got all sorts of uh, high-tech electronics in it. Is there anything in here we aren't allowed to see? Going back to our original question. And, and the answer is no. When the Navy left the ship, they took a lot of the equipment with them, uh, particularly that sort of classified stuff, so they could reuse it on other ships. This would have been before and during when the ship was in mothballs from 91 to about 99. When it was decided that the ship was gonna be turned into a museum, she was taken back to the shipyard and they went through and they demilitarized a ton of equipment and removed some other stuff and uh, generally rendered things inoperable so that we as the museum, not knowing what the heck we're doing, couldn't come along and activate a radar and uh, fire missiles and, and do stuff like that. It isn't that the ship is old, so none of this stuff is classified. Remember, the ship was used up until 91. A lot of the systems you see in here are still contemporary. It, it is that the Navy took the stuff still in use today off that they didn't want people to see. So when you come and visit the ship, if you're not allowed in a space, it's not because there's classified material in there or something that the Navy doesn't want you to see. And yes, you are allowed to take pictures of anything on the ship. I get that question pretty commonly. Uh, if you aren't allowed in a space, it's because, hey, that, that space is being used as a museum office, or that space is completely redundant. How many birthing compartments do you want to see? Do you want to see the birthing compartments for all 2,000 guys? Because we could open them all up, but how many beds do you want to wander through, honestly? Uh, or, like CIC here, it, it's in such a deep corner of the ship that there isn't really any way to get a coherent tour route there. And so it's a kind of low priority on the restoration goal list. That said, our radio club is in the process of restoring this space, and we hope to one day make it as magnificent as our combat engagement center. 
so that uh, at the very least we can bring guided tours down here. So if you'd like to contribute to that project, there's a link in the description for ways you can donate. So there are off of the tour route spaces you want to see. How do you get there? The easiest way to do that is to shoot us an email and tell us you want to do a curator's tour. Those typically run $500. Uh, we can accommodate up to 10 people, uh, although two or three is better. When you get 10 people, it takes so long to go through uh, that, that you just see less spaces. The curator's tour tends to be about three hours long, depending on your ability to do it. And uh, I, I won't say that I'll take you anywhere that you ask, but anywhere within reason that's safe, that uh, physical lim limitations allow for us to go into. So we will often go into dirty spaces. Uh, if able, we will climb vertical ladders to get into some spaces that can't be put on the normal tour route. Um, and I do work with people who want to take the curator's tour. Give me a list of spaces you want to see and I'll make sure if it's doable, we'll get there. If it isn't, I, I won't blow you off. I'll give you a reasonable explanation of why we can't go in there. If you don't know what spaces you want to go into, I've got a hit list of some of my favorite spaces that aren't on the tour route that uh, I like to take people to, and I can definitely fill three hours of talking. So the other half of this question, of course, are there spaces that I, the visitor, can't go in? Are, are there spaces that you, the curator, can't go in? And uh, short answer to that is, Yes, sort of. The ship is my artifact, so I have to be able to get into all sorts of spaces to conduct inspections to see what sort of original material was left uh, for research purposes, for, for all sorts of various reasons, but there are some spaces I don't go into, or I'm not supposed to go into. So th there are certain offices, like the uh, Human Resources Office, that I don't have the key for, I'm not just going to go into. Uh, that, that is a regular ship's office that was converted into the human resources office later. Uh, other spaces I don't go into because there might be a safety issue. And until we've tested that, uh, hey, the air in this space is safe to breathe, or there's no frangible asbestos in the air, I, I tend to not go in there. But really, as you've seen in a number of our videos, we go into some pretty deep, dark, uh, spaces, and by and large, I am allowed to go into them. So if you volunteer on board, are there spaces you aren't allowed to go into? You can't just wander around going into spaces. We use a buddy system with our volunteer program, so whenever volunteers are working off the tour route or even traveling off the tour route, they've got to go in pairs. So if something goes wrong, somebody else can come back and get help. Uh, Realistically, I'm not too much of a stickler about that. If, if you're a volunteer on the ship and you have a question, you want to see a space, you, you don't understand how something works, I'll generally take you to that space and show it to you. There, there are relatively few exceptions besides all the various tanks around the ship where uh, I wouldn't take people, where I wouldn't take people if they didn't have a legitimate reason to, to see that or a legitimate question to be answered. My role is first and foremost as a museum educator. So another part of this question is, is there anywhere on the ship I haven't been? Uh, and, and the answer is, yeah, almost, almost definitely. Uh, a lot of spaces on the ship are duplicated. There are a ton of 16-inch magazines and 5-inch magazines and fuel tanks and void spaces and, and, and. So while I've I'd estimate I've been in, you know, eight or nine hundred of the 1,100 habitable spaces on the ship, and maybe four or five of the three to 600 void spaces on the ship. Uh, so I've got a pretty good idea of most spaces, but you know, there, there are days when I open a door and I'm like, hey, I didn't know this was back here. Or, hey, I've been in this magazine on the opposite side of the ship, but I've never been in this one that has some cool sailor art. Uh, so, after three and a half years working here, I, I do still run into spaces where, where I see something new and cool. Uh, another common, call it sailor lore, old wives tale, is are there spaces on these ships that were sealed up at some point that uh, when you open the door, it looks like it's still World War II? 
Uh, I have heard that story a number of times, usually in reference to the conventional supercarriers. Uh, so I've heard people say that Kitty Hawk had a compartment that uh, they cut through a bulkhead and found an entire intact machine shop from the, the Vietnam War. Uh, I've heard the same story then about Constellation and a couple of other ships. And I've even heard people take that story, which is usually about one of the conventional carriers, and put it back on an Iowa-class battleship or some other older vessel. Uh, and I've never actually seen or heard proof of this story existing, so I'm skeptical at best. Uh, we, we've got the booklet of general plans. We, we've got the booklet of general plans from the various commissions of this ship. So we generally know things were, know where things were, know where doors were cut out and cut back in, uh, and can cross off on a list. I've been in that space, been in that space, been in that space. There aren't any big blank spots on the map that I've never been able to find a way into. That said, there was a void space uh, between the inner part of the armored belt backing bulkhead and the holding bulkhead that was an office. At some point in the 80s, some chief decided to make it an office. So this was accessed via one of the passageways off of Broadway. And it had a bunch of like janky filing cabinets and shelves and things just sort of like unauthorized ship altered into the framing of the ship. So the way Jason told it, some maintenance guys found this space and uh, called him and he goes in and the drawers still have all the paperwork in them. And that's basically it. There wasn't cool tools or sailor art or a live shell or uh, a 45 handgun under the desk or anything fun like that. It was just a space that still had all the original paperwork in the drawers. Uh, and since, all that paperwork has been taken out, and even the uh, tanker chairs that were in there were taken out and used by volunteers in other spaces. So that no longer exists in a pristine condition. The void spaces are not climate controlled, so that material was deteriorating over the years. So it made sense to take them to a climate controlled collection space. But we lose that sort of cool thing. Although that's not as cool as if we were to find a whole unknown machine shop or armory or something buried in the ship. Uh, another question I get asked is, what is my favorite space on the ship? I don't know that I have one. Uh, there are a couple of spaces on this ship that I really love for how well they've been restored by our volunteers. Uh, there are a couple spaces on this ship that I love to take people on tours because you get that ooh, ah moment. I, I couldn't say that I have a favorite space. Thank you guys for watching. What are some spaces you'd love to see? Let us know in the comment section down below. Maybe we'll be able to open a bump in the future. At the very least, if you come out for a curator's tour, I might be able to get you there. There's a link in the description for a way you can sign up for the curator's tour. Uh, and there's also a link in the description for ways you can donate to support us. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, uh, but also from a number of businesses and private individuals like yourselves. Your support not only allows us to keep making videos like this, but it allows us to open new spaces. So we really appreciate anything you're able to help us out with there. Another way you can support us is by liking, sharing, and subscribing. And uh, that way more people see the content we're making uh, and maybe they'll like it. And uh, you guys get notified when we're putting out new content, which happens about five times a week. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.